how do Christians live an authentic Christ-like life in this fake and phony social media world in which we live without popping a miracle pill? I feel so authentic. If only it was that easy. Now, let's be honest here, dear one. It is tough to be an authentic Christian, right? Now, the world tries to give us their wisdom on matters of authenticity with things like this above all, to thine own self be true. A world famous line spoken by Paulinus in Shakespeare's Hamlet. Well, I'm sorry, buddy, but that's not good enough because who am I is going to be the next logical question, a question that most people don't know the answer to in these phony baloney social media days. Now we Christians need something better than empty worldly platitudes, especially from a play about vengeance gone wrong. <coughs> now we need something or someone higher than ourselves to base our faith's sense of authenticity on. But who or what could it be? Let's get to it. God. Seems too obvious, right? Well, maybe not because he is usually the last one we turn to. Now here are just a couple of scriptures that teach us the truth that God doesn't lie, ever, and that he never changes his ways. God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Numbers 23, 19. In the hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. Titus 1-2 Because I, Jehovah, do not change, you descendants of Jacob have not been destroyed. Malachi 3-6 Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, with whom there is no change or shifting shadow. James 1-17 Now that is reliable. So, biblically speaking, we need to base our faith's authenticity on Him, our Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, that's what Christian means, to be Christ-like. Now, Paul wrote as much to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 5-14, through 14, and these are the scriptures that I'm going to use to show us how to be authentic Christians. Let's read them together. Verse 5, I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. Now here Paul acknowledges Timothy's faith is genuine and is two generations deep from his own. Now we also learn from the Apostle Paul that we need to have a living faith in order for it to be authentic. but. How do we know we have living faith? Now we are told that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So hearing God's word is the start of authentic faith. Question, how often do you hear God's word read aloud? Now a good way to do that is to start memorizing God's word and then obeying it. Now this is an example of how good works such as hearing, memorizing, and obeying God's word are what prove our faith and make it living. Verse 6 For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Verse 7 For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Christian authenticity involves effort, boldness, power, love, and self-discipline. And we find these things in the giving of the Spirit of God, which is given to us when we first believe. 
when he gives us the gifts of salvation, which are redemption, justification, and sanctification. But also in a special way with the laying on of hands for the specific work of ministering to the sheep. As in the case of apostles, teachers, evangelists, bishops, and deacons, and so on. So, we shouldn't be timid, but instead take on the power, love, and self-control, or self-discipline, or holiness that God's Spirit gives us. Verse 8. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Yes, let us not be ashamed of our Lord's testimony. Uh, What is his testimony? I'm glad you asked because Jesus's testimony is that he is Jehovah in the flesh, that he came down from heaven and was born of a virgin as a genuine flesh and blood human being named Jesus which means Jehovah saves. Do you know how many people who claim to be children of God hate that testimony? Now, the people who hate the Lord's testimony end up making false gospels that suit their own liking. For example, the Pharisees and Sadducees who claimed to be children of Abraham and God, practiced Judaism, which is the syncretism of their oral man-made traditions with the Torah. And we all know how Jesus felt about that. (coughs) Now, because Satan's ways are an inversion of God's ways, many of the worshipers at the synagogue of Satan hated Jesus since he didn't meet their expectations of the Messiah that their religion crafted, which was a hunky prince with an army that would kick the Romans out of Judea and make the Jews the master race of his never-ending kingdom on the earth. Now, as it turns out, God's word taught that the Messiah would be more than a mere man, according to Psalm 110 and would be rather plain looking and of lowly reputation and would come to liberate his people and the other nations, you know, the hated Gentiles, from their chains that bound them to sin and death. And then he would come back to set up his kingdom later on. Now, not to be outdone by the Jews' unbelief, People from other Hellenized nations like Alexandria also hated and continue to hate the very idea that God became a man. Why? Now because of the big lie that Satan told humanity at the foot of that forbidden tree, which is that in order to become like God, we must acquire special revelation knowledge about good and evil from forbidden fruit found in witchcraft, sorcery, and pagan mysticism. Now from that point on, humanity has been vainly seeking godhood through their rebellion. Now that is why it is abhorrent for fallen mankind to accept that God wanted to become a man. I mean, what kind of God would want to do such a thing? Right? So instead of choosing to believe this biblical truth, they choose to believe Jesus was merely a man who was given the power to not sin by God's Holy Spirit. Now that, dear one, is what is called being ashamed of our Lord's testimony. Oh, and Paul also encouraged Timothy to join him in suffering for Christ. Dear one, I don't know anyone who enjoys suffering, including yours truly, but by the power of God, we can endure the suffering we receive when we spread Jesus' true gospel and even experience joy despite the pain of persecution. Verse 9, He has saved us and called us to a holy life 
not because of anything we have done, but because of His own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. So, according to Paul, God saved us through His blood atonement in Jesus. And then He called us to live a separated life. Now that is what holy means. Not living like the world to fulfill its various lusts. And all of this was done before the beginning of time. Now this simply means that before Genesis 1-1, Jehovah made his omniscient plan and he is running it. And its fruition, Jesus' second coming and our new bodies will come to pass in his own good time. Verse 10. But it, his gospel of grace, has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Now, when God became the man Jesus by his virgin birth in Bethlehem, he destroyed death and made eternal life available to us by it, the gospel. Now, this is the only way people will ever become immortal. Now, Jesus said, the only way to the Father is by going through him. Verse 11. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. Verse 12. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame, because I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. So here Paul is telling us why he is suffering because of the huge responsibility God has given him to be a herald, uh, an apostle, and a teacher of the good news. Good news which A, the wicked don't want to hear, and B, which the false converts seek to pervert into a false gospel that profits them. Now, why isn't Paul ashamed of or dejected by his predicament? Because he knows who his God is, our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I encourage you not to balk at this, because Isaiah 9-6 says that the child given to us, the Messiah, would be called the Everlasting Father, right? Well, there you go. And in Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 through 24, Jehovah tells us to rejoice not in human strength, wisdom, which is philosophy, or wealth, but rather to rejoice in knowing who Jehovah is and understanding his ways of loving devotion, justice, and righteousness, which are all displayed in the gospel of Christ. Verse 13, what you have heard from me keep as the pattern of teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Verse 14, guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Now Timothy and every believer by extension is being instructed to keep Paul's revelations that he received directly from Christ as the and not a pattern, but the pattern of sound doctrine. Now we are to keep or guard the sound doctrine that we have heard with faith and love in Christ Jesus, not in our own strength alone, but with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Now that spirit, according to Paul in 2 Corinthians 3.17, is the Lord or Christ the Lord that lives inside every true believer. Now, despite Paul's teaching here, there are people who call themselves Christian who refuse to acknowledge Paul as a true apostle of Christ, and as a result, call him a deceiver and false teacher. Now, I don't understand why, because Peter endorses Paul in his second epistle as our beloved brother Paul, and he even warns how the unskilled and untaught would distort his difficult teachings to their hurt 
and the hurt of others. So the people who accept Paul's epistles are genuine Christians. So to sum up, in order to be an authentic Christian, we need to be bold in sharing the gospel with the lost in the power, love, and self-discipline of Christ. We need to not be ashamed of the gospel, and we are not to be afraid to suffer for the gospel either. We need to live in sanctification or separate ourselves from the world. Now we need to accept that Jesus' gospel is the only way to achieve life immortal. And we need to receive the sound doctrine that the apostles, including Paul, were authorized to give us by the Holy Spirit of God. We need to know who our one and only God is, the Lord Jesus Christ, Jehovah in the flesh. We need to hear, believe, and obey God's word given to us through his prophets, apostles, and teachers in order to have a living faith. For as the Apostle James said, faith without works is dead. We need to keep or guard ourselves against false teachings with the Holy Spirit's help. So in other words, be a good Berean or someone with an open mind to test all things with scripture in order to see if what they say is so. Which is, of course, the mission of this channel. Now, by the way, the original Bereans were commended for believing what Paul had to say about Jesus being the Messiah, which is understood to mean that God became a man through the kingly line of David. So, how did you do, dear one? Are you an authentic Christian according to these scriptures? Or maybe you need a little more work. Well, don't be discouraged if you need more work because we aren't home yet, dear one. I want to encourage you to press on in the genuine faith and strive to live an authentic Christian life according to God's word. Now you can and will do it with his help. Well, we are finally getting into the autumnal season and with its crisp air and shorter days comes one of the most evil and abysmal holy days, Halloween. So I'm going to put a link in the description to my Halloween playlist. Watch it if you dare. Well, dear one, I look forward to being with you once more as I look to the scriptures to see if what they, the so-called Christian clergy, say is so. Bye-bye for now. Hold on. I'm having an authentic pill problem here. It's a good problem to have. It's ganache. Okay. Now here are just a couple of scriptures. Scriptures. <laughs> now we also learn from the Apostle Paul that I need to scratch my nose. Melting, melting, kind of like ganache.